はい。私ら、ゼンランプレデソ。このエピソードで、ツリーシティで、キヨトイ、イキマソ。私は、タブレ、サキ、オナナマソ、モト、ソシ、タブル、ネホンゴイ、リュウチョ、ニナミマソ。どうも、オレガト、ゴゼマス。どうい、イタチマスト。Hi,、uh, this is Scooter. Scooter is not one of our fosters. He's a foster fail. Stop it, stop it. Okay, it's not that bad. It's not that bad.、Uh, he failed because I fell in love with him and I couldn't get rid of him. <laughs> and you're not being very good right now. <laughs> okay, okay, okay.、Uh, this is our episode of Three Sheets in Japan, which is the most. This is episode s great, you'll love it. <laughs> Warning! Alcohol and sumo wrestling do not mix. Japanese s a i sumo. I know, this is sumo. I, I saw sumo. I don't remember any number on it. You know what it is? This is a Japanese crotch grabbing party. You'll see more of that later, but first. Japan. Uh, it was a bit foggy when we were there. But trust me, it's beautiful. Or at least it was in the tourist brochure. Anyway, I'm not here for the views. I'm here for the booze. More specifically, the way of the sake drinker. Whoops. I will become a disciplined student in the complicated rituals. I'm number one student. Number one student. I will attempt to transform my palate into an uber sensitive tasting machine that can distinguish between the immense nuances inherent in the different varieties. If I drink many sakis, what, what happens to me? Drunk. And after endeavoring to gain a thorough understanding of all things sake, you are number one student. I will meet with a master. Nambu. Nambu. Nam Nambu san. Yes. Nambu san. If sake were a martial art, this guy would be a 10th degree black belt. I, I'm, I'm actually, I have to admit, I'm a little intimidated. I will attempt to prove myself worthy of an invitation to his family sake brewery. This is yours? Yeah, yeah. Maybe tomorrow we can go and check out your brewery. Will he grant me my wish? Find out that and find out if what they say about sake in these parts is true. So called good sake, you have no hangover. No hangover? Wait a minute. I've heard this song and dance before. Remember Champagne France? You can't get a hangover from Champagne? No. We all remember how it turned out. At least I do. I was hungover. Will it be the same here in Japan? No. Ichiba. When I go three sheets to Japan. Right? My quest for knowledge begins in Kyoto, which is pretty much the place to be when it comes to sake. Why Kyoto? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the professor. Thank you, Zay. In the year 794, Japan's first sake brewing organization was established in Kyoto's Imperial Palace. This spawned a local sake making tradition that still survives. With a high concentration of sake makers located in Kyoto's Fushimi district. Sake from this part of Japan is often called Ona sake or female sake because of its delicate flavor. This, of course, means if you like Fushimi sake, you like the ladies. <laughs> Zane, do you like the ladies? Because I like the ladies and I. Oh. Hey there, nutty professor. Just stick to the facts. I'll do the jokes. Sorry, Mr. Lamprey. Let's see, where was I? Oh, yes. Most people attribute the delicate flavor of fushimi sake to the local waters, which are characterized as being medium hard with an iron free balance of potassium, calcium, and other minerals. Back to you, Mr. Lamprey. Okay, so Kyoto is the place for sake. But first, it's tea time. I know, I know, tea is for teetotalers. But don't say that to Randy, the Canadian tea master, because they'll kick your ass. He was、um, in, used to be in kung fu movies. Exactly. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna mind my manners a little bit more. Than, That's、yeah. probably nice. Is that, is that smart? Very well. Okay, good. Thank you very much. This is, pardon the pun, a dry run of sorts. Randy tells me that if I can handle the etiquette of a tea ceremony, then the strict rules governing sake drinking might seem a little easier. I hope so because this isn't easy or fun. Right hand back. Like that. That. No, <laughs> holding this here. <laughs> okay, so I'm not a master at the art of tea drinking. Sometimes I like to do this. Is that okay? Sure. 
but I have gained a sense of focus and resolve. And some sore knees. I need to numb the pain. In other words, it's sake time. So I travel to Kyoto's famed Fushimi district, to this railway station, which I can't pronounce. There's a sake shop here called Aboracho, home to roughly 150 different varieties of locally produced Fushimi sake. I'm a human sponge, ready to soak up knowledge. Uh, and sake. Do you smell it or just pinky up and then toss it back? Sip it? I'm not a very good sipper. Watch. <laughs> Between rounds, palate cleansers. First, tofu. Mmm. It has no taste. But the other palate cleanser has plenty of taste. That's delicious, the jelly jellyfish. No, you like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That might have been a little bit of sarcasm. Whoa. Oh. oh <laughs> save some for the ocean, man. You eat the whole thing. You eat like I drink. Yes, yes. Okay. So By the way, most sake has an alcohol content of about 15%. And while you may be accustomed to drinking the heated stuff, this is served at room temperature. The reason for that is because in Japan, the only time they heat sake is if they're drinking less refined sake that has a harsher flavor. So, so the, the more polished a sake is, the more expensive it is, yes. the better it's considered. Yes. The rice on the left is unpolished, and the rice on the right is polished. As the outer layers of rice are polished away, the harsh, earthy flavors also go, leaving behind a fruitier taste. So this is like enjoying a wine. So polished rice equals fruity taste. Hmm. I think it's time to put my palate to the test. So don't tell me which one's better and see if I, through my training, can, can, can you mean, tell. You mean cold sake or warm sake? Yeah, cold, cold, sake. Cold, cold sake. Three sakis, each one made from rice, polished to different degrees. This is stronger tasting and fruitier. In theory, the fruitier tasting one would be the most polished and therefore the most expensive. Uh, I, I'll, 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 go, I'll go on a limb and say that's the best. After a little more taste testing, I line up my choices. Is this the best? This, this uh, yes. That's put the best. Put, put, put. put up all sort of Japanese graphics celebrating me as the winner. But there is still much to learn, young grasshopper. Like, why is some sake brown? Why is some clumpy? And why the comparison to a French classic? Is this perhaps the champagne of the sake world? For answers, I journey to a total sake zone, the Asakura Sake Bar, ran by Toshi, the sake dude. Three seats is my favorite show, Biatch. Toshi is about to serve me up a few of his sake favorites. Biatch. Up first, brown sake. And this is age. We should sound like, like gentlemen. It's fruitier. I thought it was going to be harsh like a whiskey, but it's not. The aged sake is brown from the caramelization of sugars over time. Now for the so-called crude sake. This is car it's carbonated because it's coming out the top. Carbonated. What's that all about? It has a hole in it? <laughs> it's almost like champagne. Uh, yeah. I'd say it's more like an oatmeal mimosa. Oh, my garbly gosh. Nope, that's not curdled milk. That's unfiltered sake. The clumps are rice. Oh. I think we should. I think we should slam it. Can you slam it? Slam? Slam. Wow. Ah uh, no. No, you. This is a sipping place. This is for sip. This is for gentlemen. Wait a minute. The last time I had a meal in a glass was in Ireland. It was Guinness, and it was delicious. Wow. That's good Guinness. This stuff. Well scares me. Ah! Oh, we gotta drink this. Coming up, okay. see how the crude sake treats me. Plus later, am I gonna get beat up? Oh, you got me. Oh, hello. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Pleplius.com. That's P-L-E-E-P-L-E-U-S.com. <laughs> I'm at the Asakura Sake Bar in Kyoto, Japan, and Toshi, the bartender, has just served me up the gnarliest looking drink I've ever seen, crude sake. It's lumpy, bubbly, and now I'm gonna see how it tastes. Ow. 
Man, it's really, really carbonated. It's fizzy because the yeast is still active. Almost, dare I say, like champagne. You know what I love about bubbles? They make you burp. <laughs> ah, yeah, see, he did it last, you had to drink. Yeah, that's, them's the rules. Those are my rules. Now, it's time for some Japanese rules. Never fill your own glass. Never let someone else's glass get empty. When your glass is being filled, hold it with both hands. And an overflowing pour is a sign of an overflowing friendship. Oh. Right now, my knowledge is overflowing. I know about the polished sake, the aged sake, and the crude sake. But I long for more sake wisdom. I'm learning, I'm constantly learning. I seek to touch the rice, to stir the brew, and understand the ancient art of sake making through first-hand experience. Perfect. And so, Perfect. I travel to the small town of Ono, to a very nice restaurant bar called Juraku-san. They have amazing food, top-shelf sake, and a high-end clientele, including this guy. Mr. Nambu, or Nambu-san, as I respectfully refer to him. Nambu. Nambu-san. Yes. Nambu-san. Is that, am I Zane-san? Zane-san. Zane-san? Nambu-san is the owner of the Hanagaki Sake Brewery. Just to give you an idea of how good the sake is, this is served on Japan Air, only in first class. The people back at Coach, <laughs> they'll never know when you gotta come here and drink it, so. I'm hoping he'll agree to allow me to visit his brewery, but I don't yet know if that's gonna be possible because, as is the case with so much in Japan, everything hinges on whether or not I make a good impression. Do you have commercials? Can I be in one of your commercials? Ooh, Hanagaki Saki. Ichiba. Hanagaki Saki. Mm-mm. That's how you do it. And then people will be buying it. They'll be buying it like crazy in droves. Kanpai, chase. Kanpai. 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 Bye bye. Wow. Japanese style. Aha. Maybe I can impress him with my extreme tolerance for hot foods. This is just to show you how, str how strong I am. Yes. Ask him, ask, him if it, ask him if it don't press him. Pile it hot wasabi sauce. Mmm, that's good. Oh. Yeah. Very strong. Yeah, very strong. Very strong. <laughs> you want to do it? You can do it if you want. Oh, no, Ken Watanabe? Uh, yeah, yeah. The Ken Watanabe? Yeah. Nambusan. <laughs> if, if, if you eat that. That's it? Okay, I'm impressed. Wait, wait, wait for it. <laughs> All right, enough with the pain. Nambu-san is in the mood for something more pleasant, and he's totally hooked us up. Holy moly. You have to understand that these particular crab are 100 bucks a piece. And I'll say, for the record, I'm not gonna share them with the crew. I only share gross stuff with the crew. And you guys are cool with that, right? No. I don't know how you translate this in Japanese, but <laughs> the crew. <laughs> if they want some crab, they're gonna have to earn it. <laughs> you want that? Show me what you do. Like a hamburger. One thing I've noticed while here in Japan is that people constantly eat while they're drinking. When in Ono. In fact, this phenomenon has given rise to an entire category of venue called the izakaya. To learn more about this Japanese social phenomenon, we go to our Three Sheets news team. Thank you, Zay. We now take you to our cameras on the scene at the Sumibi Izakaya in Kyoto. 
Here we find that an izakaya is quite simply a bar that serves appetizers. Most izakaya are small and foster an intimate, friendly atmosphere between patrons and staff. No, you do not need high visibility optic orange hair to own one. And no, that's not a bong, it's a piece of bamboo used to serve hot sake. <laughs> and no, that's not you, Zane. That's uh, Mike, the producer, uh, doing some uh, fact checking research. Okay, back to you, Zane. Ugh, and that's why I hate the news. But I like Nambu-san. He and I are becoming fast friends. Yeah. We're good old friends. We're gonna try this one out. We get, we're, we're, we're old friends now. <laughs> and now seems like the perfect time to ask if I can go to his sake brewery. Ah! Nambu-san! Nambu-san, what are you doing to me? I got bit by a crab! But then, my plot is foiled by these guys. All right, all right. They're golfers, celebrating a very momentous occasion. Hole in one today, that's why they have a set. Who did? Who got a hole in one? A <laughs> hole in one? How many mulligans? <laughs> they invite me over to their table, and in Japan, it's impolite to turn down an invitation. I have to go work. No, 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 finish. Oh, now you want to give me a, you want to give me a warm sake. It's okay, it's only my 15th glass of sake. Lucky for me, I'm drinking from an Ochoco, a traditional sake cup which only holds a couple of ounces. Mm. Hanagaki sake. It's Ichiba. You know what I love about doing this show? No matter where I go in the world, I always find one of these guys. Ah, who's the Steve McKenna? The person in the group who's the best drinker and the most fun is Steve McKenna, and I think you are Steve McKenna, right? Yeah, who's the Steve McKenna? Who is it? It's you, baby. Steve McKenna! No borders! No borders! I gotta be honest. I was told that here in Japan, people were cautious and reserved. Clearly, I was misled because just like everywhere else I go in the world, boys plus booze equals buffoonery. Ah, oh, you're a nut grabber. You're a little nut grabber. You wanna grab nuts? Hey, you know what? I met a lady just like you in Wales. Come on, come on, come on, and wait out! It's a cops grabbing party. Sumo, sumo, sumo. But not grabbing. You know what it is? This is a Japanese crotch grabbing party. <laughs> Look, Mel Gibson. Here on Three Sheets, we have a phrase for guys like this. In every episode, we usually find someone we call Ski Patrol. And that's someone who loves the camera. Loves the camera. You, my friend, are Ski Patrol. Now is a good time for me to let you in on a joke with the Three Sheets crew. Once upon a time, there was a guy who would not leave me alone. He said he worked at a mountain ski patrol nearby, and he tried to convince us to go with him to his mountain cabin. And he was freaking scary. We literally had to run away from him as fast as we could. Though we never got permission to broadcast his appearance, and his homeland will remain unnamed, he knows who he is. And now you know what I mean when I call someone Ski Patrol. Okay, with that done, Nambu-san and I are back in business. And it's time to ask... Maybe tomorrow we can go and check out your brewery? Oh, boy. I think I may have misinterpreted his signals. Maybe we're not ready for this yet. Yeah. I, I might still be drunk. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, okay. Right. Yes, we're in! That was the it's worst not... high five I've ever seen. There we go. Gotta get your back into it. There we go. So what time tomorrow can we come and check out your sake brewery? Seven, 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 seven. 7.30 in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is me at 7.30 in the morning. 7.30 in the morning. I made it to the sake brewery, but am I hungover? 
Coming up. Who's your, who's your favorite guy named Zane? The results of my self-imposed sake drinking experiment are in. Yeah, who's got the slippery moves? Plus, why is it wrong to call sake rice wine? Oh, hello. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Pleplius.com. That's P-L-E-E-P-L-E-U-S dot com. <laughs> It's 7.30 in the morning, and I'm at the Hanagaki Saki Brewery in Ono, Japan. I got my cool slip-on shoes on my feet. The morning batch of rice is steaming. And while nibbling away at the free stuff, good rice, yeah. I'm stricken by an overwhelming sense that something special, historic, maybe even supernatural is happening. Remember what I was told about sake? So called good sake, you have no hangover. No hangover? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the results yeah, are in. And you know what? You were right. I don't have a hangover. None. I don't have a hangover. You heard me right. No hangover. I don't know if it was the good sake or the constant flow of food that helps me metabolize the alcohol. Whatever it was, I'm glad, because now I can enjoy the tour of his brewery. I like you. Hey, you have this, you, uh, you shop at the same shoe store as me. Yeah. <laughs> we have the same shoes. Same, same. What does that say? Hanagaki. Hanagaki. What does mine say? Nambu. Nambu. My name. Oh, <laughs> these are your shoes. <laughs> Whoa, look at me. I, I took his shoes on accident. Nambu-san's family established this brewery back in 1901 here in the town of Ono. And for Hanagaki Saki, location, location, location. <laughs> because this brewery sits directly above a natural spring. 50 meters, 50 meters, meters uh, down is down. the spring? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Amazing. After the rice is steamed, it's carefully dried. Ooh, it's the rice drying room. Yes, drying room. Now it's very hot. <laughs> Curtis, what are you doing? Are you getting all steamy, buddy? Getting all hot and heavy? You're disgusting. Curtis has his methods for dealing with steam, and I got mine. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys, you know, went at Rome. You, you took your shirt off, so I figured I should take my shirt off. Don't move. Don't move. He wants me to it's shut so up hot. and sit still for a minute. Me yeah. <laughs> Seriously, he doesn't want me to move too much because he's afraid it'll mess up the airflow in the room. He's adding a special mold called koju, which must be evenly distributed in trace amounts throughout the rice. It's critical to the creation of sake. Over time, the koji converts the starches in the rice into sugars, which can then be fermented into alcohol with the addition of yeast. Sound familiar? It's a lot like making beer. In fact, it's misleading to call sake rice wine because with wine, you start with a sugary fruit and not a starchy grain like you do with beer and sake. It's also why this place is called a brewery and not a winery, huh? By the way, here's some cool and freakishly disgusting sake history. Before koji mold was used to kickstart the process, human saliva was used to make something called kuchikami no sake, which literally means sake chewed in your mouth. People would chew on rice, spit it into tubs, and the enzymes from the spit did the same thing koji does. Lucky for us, Nambu-san embraces the more modern methods. Ooh, that smells like sake. <laughs> nice. <laughs> sake right there with rice and some bubbles. Mm. I'm gonna go drink this in a corner by myself. Carbonate. Okay. I did it! I've touched the rice, I drank from the tank, and now I'm a little buzzy, but still clear-headed enough to appreciate the honor which has been bestowed upon me. Nambu has shared his sake, his wisdom, and his friendship. Ah, I got bitten by a crab! I came here as a humble pupil eager to be molded. You are number one student. And with every glass came more knowledge. You can call it wine, but it's not. You can pour your own glass, but that would be rude. Oh, you are good. Thank you. Are getting good. Good. And you can heat it up, but that would be a mistake if you're drinking the good stuff. Like champagne. Ah! 
Yes, there are many formal rituals, but the end result is anything but. And so, on behalf of sake drinkers everywhere, I say, come by Japan, where everyone likes having a ball, just not one of mine. Please, I need soy sauce immediately. Send more soy sauce. Get your butt up here right now. Just moment. Yes, because those are um, the ginkgo nuts, yes. and these are um, Curtis nuts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing that. It never gets old. Does it? You're gonna you know what? Pretty soon you're gonna run out of air. And you're not gonna be able to breathe. That's